So now it's time to add B-roll to our video. So the first thing that we need to do is to change the frame rates of all our B-roll clips. Um, the reason why is because we want to make them consistent to the frame rate of our sequence. So as you can see right here, if we go to interview, uh, we filmed this interview clip originally at 24 frames per second. And the way to uh, see that and check that is we right click and go to modify and interpret footage. And you can see this is the original frame rate that we filmed at, okay? So, so keep in mind to use the lowest frame rate that you filmed at and keep that consistent throughout. So even though we filmed majority of clips for the B-roll at 60 frames per second, we can change that to 24 frames per second and this is how you do that. So let's go to our B-roll bin and we'll right click on this clip, modify, interpret footage, and you can see that the frame right here is 60 frames per second. Okay, so let's go ahead and change that to 24 frames per second. Okay, now when we do that, when we double click and uh, go to the source here, you can see that the playback is in slow motion, okay? But now the, the video clip is at 24 frames per second. So what you can do is when you um, decide to choose what section of this clip that you want, you can always speed it back up in the sequence here. And so I'll show you how, how to do that pretty soon. But let's go ahead and change the, uh, and let's modify the frame rates for all the clips. Let's click on this first uh, video clip here and we'll scroll down and we'll hit shift and click on the last image. I'm gonna click command here, uh, hit command and click on this last image right here. This image is just a picture. So this is what we're gonna put at the very end of the video. This is like the end screen uh, call to action type when we decide to upload it to YouTube, okay? So now that we have all these videos, video clips selected, um, let's go and right click and go to modify, interpret footage, and here uh, where it says assume this frame rate, we're going to type 24 frames per second and then click OK. So now when we go through any of these uh, any of these clips that we highlighted, let's right click, modify, interpret footage. Uh, you can see here that it is now, the frame rate is now 24 frames per second. Um, so let's go back and you can see that when we go to the source for this image, you can see that it's all in slow-mo. So now I'm gonna go back to B-roll and then go to the workout clips and then do the same thing and modify the frames per second. To 24, click okay. I modified all the frames per second to 24 because the lowest frame rate that I filmed at was at 24. But if the lowest frame rate that you filmed at was, let's say, 30 frames per second, and you want your final video to be 30 frames per second, then you're going to change your video clips to be 30 frames per second to match your sequence. So just keep that in mind. You always want your frame rates to match your sequence, okay? So let's go to effects. I added these effects. This is gonna be in the next lesson where we're gonna go over effects, but for right now, I'm going to just modify the frame rate for these effects. Just so they're all consistent. Click OK. And let's go back to 
Uh, let's go to time lapse here. Go to 24. So now that we change the uh, frame rates, let's go to um, our B-roll and let's start adding our B-roll to our timeline here. Um, so I'm going to start out, I want to start out the video with Carlton speaking, uh, just so that it shows his face during his introduction. Hi, my name is Carlton Dennis and I help everyday taxpayers avoid paying taxes legally. So we're going to start adding B-roll right here uh, where this first cut is. And I kind of want it to be, you know, eye-catching. And when we filmed him pulling up in his car, walking to the office, it's a great way to kind of start the video off. Okay, so now let's go to office and see where that clip was. Okay. Right here. Okay, we'll choose our endpoint. Out point. Let's add that. All right, so we filmed this clip originally in 4K. Let's bring it down to 60 frames per second. Let's scale it down and we'll move, we'll change the position just slightly. Now you can see that the clip is long right here. The reason why is because it's playing back in slow-mo. But I want this to play uh, at regular speed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on this clip. I'm gonna go to speed duration and type in 250%. Okay, and click OK. And now when we play it back. As a tax strategist, I have built my career by following. Okay, there we go. So now it's playing back at regular speed. Let's go ahead and keep editing here. When you add clips to your timeline, keep in mind that whatever is on top is what will be seen. So for example, when you see this timeline with the interview, there's no other clips on top of it. So that means that will be seen in your video. However, since we added B-roll clips right here to the top, this will be seen. Um, so in terms of length for your B-roll, I like to keep it around three to four seconds. Now this also depends on what's happening in your B-roll uh, clip itself, what type of action, how much you want to show. Uh, I don't. I generally don't like to have it play too long, but just enough to get the point. Another way to kind of copy your settings, remember you can right click or do Command C and then click on the clip you want to copy the settings to, paste attributes. We're only going to copy the motion settings, click OK. Um, so now this is the same motion settings as this clip here. For right now, when you're adding the B-roll, it doesn't have to be perfect. Because remember, as you're editing, you may realize, oh, I want to move one clip to here, another clip to here. Maybe lengthen or shorten a certain clip. At this part of the process, you're basically placing the clips that you feel fit best within your timeline. So I also created another sequence that I named Extra Clips. This is where I put clips that I already edited, uh, but are still a maybe, usually because I found a better clip for the main sequence. But if I do decide to go back and add those clips within the Extra Clips sequence, and place them into the main sequence, all you have to do is just copy and paste them instead of going back and having to re-edit. So this saves me time and it also keeps my work uh, spaces clean in the main sequence area. So now I'm gonna start adding clips here, same process. I'm going to uh, find the clip that I like, uh, find the endpoint and outpoint section of the clip that I want, drag and drop, and then if 
I want it to be regular speed, I'm gonna change it to 250%. If not, I'm gonna keep the clip as is. Um, and remember, keep in mind what the person is saying so that the B-roll uh, matches as much as possible to that. Okay, so in this part of the lesson, I'm going to speed up this process So I finished editing the B-roll and placing them over the interview clips. And now I'm gonna walk you through uh, the sequence. So first of all, you see these cuts right here? I wanna make sure that the B-roll cover these cuts so that we don't see like the hard cuts. If not, I'm going to make this uh, line right here invisible. You'll see. Is legally as a tax You see that cut right there? We don't want to see that in the uh, final video. So that's why B-roll comes in handy to cover that up. Okay, so that's why you can see that wherever a cut happens, I'm making sure to add some B-roll over that. Also, when it comes to B-roll, I like to add at least two B-roll clips together instead of having just one B-roll clip by itself. If not, it would go from interview to B-roll and back to interview. I like to have enough B-roll put together uh, in a sequence as the video plays. So here in this section, um, I have the scene of Carl pulling up in the car, him walking to the office. It fits his intro. Um, so the next set of B-roll is right here. So I'm going to start playing in this section here. Instead of keeping this information to myself, I decided to share it. Now, you see how he says, keeping this information to myself. Right after he says myself, at the end of myself, I like to end the, the B-roll clip so that it's a clean cut. It's not cutting in between the word myself. It's occurring after myself. So then now when he starts a new sentence, I decided to share information to myself. I decided. The new sentence where he starts, I decided, now it's cleaner. So he's not, so the B-roll doesn't cut off a certain word in his sentence. Um, I just like to do that just because it makes the cuts cleaner when it comes to B-roll and interview clips. And this form of radical transparency has led to my success as a tax strategist as well as a real estate investor. I spend my time now educating real estate investors. So I chose these certain clips because it shows Carl teaching and it fits with what he's saying, okay? Let's keep moving. Investors and business owners on how to leverage the tax laws to offset their income in combinations with their goals and visions. My success habits stem from those I follow, such as adopting the habit of which. Now also to uh, these gaps right here, which is clips of him speaking, I like to leave enough space in between. I don't, uh, usually maybe around three seconds, four seconds, depending on what he is saying. Uh, I like to keep enough space so that he gets his point across in each of these gaps until I start adding the next B-roll clips. Okay, now let's keep moving. As I follow, such as adopting the habit of waking up at 4 a.m. to work out. I wake up at 4 a.m. because I believe in put. So here, this is when he starts talking about working out. And that's why I started adding these uh, workout clips. And I added this clip here to start the scene of working out because it's, it, it kind of like gradually brings you into that setting. It's him walking into the gym, you're following him as he's walking to the gym. And then after that, that's when I start adding um, clips of him setting up, putting on the weight belt, and then him actually working out. It's kind of like a gradual progression instead of just fully throwing in a clip of him working out. Me personally, I like to ease the viewer into that scene. But also keep in mind, it's up to you. You know, this is my personal style and this is what I like to use. But when it comes to B-roll there's and, and editing videos, there's no rule. There's no set rule that you really have to follow. It's up to your own creativity. But let's keep moving here. In my body to its limits right in the morning, doing the hardest thing I possibly can, right at the start of the day, so that when I'm faced with difficult... You know, I like to switch up the B-roll. So, for example, 
we have kind of like a wide shot here showing his full body and then I possibly can right up. then we show kind of like a, a close-up um, of him picking up a weight at the start of the day so that and then now it goes into the next uh, clip of him using that weight for this exercise so it's it's it goes in a sequence it's not jumping back and forth when I'm faced with difficulties when I get into the office, I have the mental toughness to handle those problems. I have established awareness to time management. So now we're back into the office. I added some scenes with him speaking on the phone, walking, just kind of like a mix. And also too, I'm gonna to go back here to, to these clips because offset their income in combination. The reason why I chose this, these are two different settings. Um, this is in the conference room when we filmed the conference room. This setting is in his own office, but I did notice that Carl is holding a pen. So the reason why I chose these two clips together is because of the pen. It, it kind of like uh, fits together because he's writing. Um, in combinations with their goals and visions. Okay, so this is kind of like my thought process when I'm adding B-roll. I'm trying to find what two clips fit together and how to keep the story moving along. Success habits that you can implement into your daily life. As we pursue this journey towards financial freedom, I promise to hold you. Okay, so in this section, I added time lapses for the B-roll. And the reason why is because Carl is now starting to talk about the big picture. And I felt that adding a time lapse of the big city would be fitting. And instead of having just one time lapse, I decided to add another time lapse so that it stays continuous. And that's why I added this time lapse of Carl and his team in the office. I promise to hold you accountable to your success habits. I plan to be your guide as you remain steadfast on building wealth in today's day and age. All right. And I chose these clips right here, a clip of him on his phone. It looks like an Instagram story giving his advice to his viewers. And then the, this clip here with his team, kind of like a wide shot showing the whole office. And then the next clip is an over the shoulder shot right here where Carl is giving advice. Now that fits with what he's talking about with him being the guide to the viewer. All right. Stay in age. I'm Carlton Dennis. Let's begin our journey today. Keep in mind that I may make changes here or there to certain B-rolls. I may go back and realize, hmm, maybe another B-roll clip fits better. I like to just grab and go. Find the best B-roll that I like at that moment and place it in there. Because over time, as you go on through the editing process with the B-roll, it's going to get your creative juices flowing. So now that we have our B-roll set here, the next step is to add effects.